thank a veteran who anybody who has uh, honorably served their, their country in the, in the armed forces. I think of honor. I think about the mission. I think about the people that um, I've had the honor of serving with. Um, I think uh, of people that still have um, hope uh, for our future, that defend our freedoms, um, the right to have what we have, and, and the right to do what we're able to do in this beautiful country that we have. It's a time to um, celebrate or recognize um, being part of a group of people who have supported the values and ideals of this country. Some have uh, did so at great sacrifice. So it's just an honor to be part of that whole group of people who have done that. Veterans Day is a day to honor everybody that had made the commitments to uh, serve their country, either in a combat role or in a peacetime role. It's a nice time where we, we all get together. We get to meet people from different units, different walks of life, older veterans, people that you wouldn't think that we'd have anything in common with. Somebody might be 80, I'm only in my 20s. But being in the service, you, you have an instant connection. You instantly identify with each other who may have served in your unit years prior. Well, I served uh, in the 60s during the Vietnam era, so there was a lot of controversy about uh, serving in this, uh, being in the service in those days. I was drafted, so that's a little different today because the services today, the voluntary service. Um, so in, in those days, one <clears throat> wanted to uh, go and do what they have to do and hopefully come back uh, of sound mind and healthy body. And I was lucky enough to do that. My time was really good. The Navy was good to me, uh, especially the Civil Engineer Corps. It was a transition time because we had just gotten out of Vietnam and we had been transitioning into a volunteer force. Um, so there was a lot of transition going on. I enjoyed my time in service, the three years of active duty. I met a lot of interesting people from a lot of different places. Um, unique. Um, I was on submarines and I was on sonar supervisor. So I was the eyes and the ears of the submarine when we were under. My time serving was uh, broken up into kind of two main segments. I joined in 95. I was on a submarine active duty during 9-11. Um, and then the second half of my tour was essentially trying to invent a new style of warfare for a new enemy. Some of the best memories I have is honestly serving with my twin brother. Um, we went in together. Some of my fondest memories are being able to serve with my brother. We were able to go overseas together too. I know a lot of people don't have that opportunity, aren't in the same situation, so I'm truly grateful for that. Pretty awesome. I got to deploy um, around the world. I embedded with nearly every Marine Corps unit that um, exists, tanks, artillery, infantry. Um, I got to travel the world and I got to go to Okinawa, Japan. I went to uh, Fallujah, Iraq, Hawaii. Um, I got to see the world and it was, a, it was a pretty awesome experience. I got to experience pretty much all the MOSs in the Marine Corps without actually having to do them and I got a unique perspective on the entire Marine Corps and the mission as a whole. My time in the Navy definitely had its ups and downs. Um, it was a lot of hard work, um, a lot of crazy hours, but I saw a lot of different places, met some great people. Um, I learned a lot while I was in the Navy. One of the proudest times for me when I was overseas was during an election year. It was one of the first that they've had outside of uh, Saddam Hussein and the, many of them were waving their hands because they had the, the, the ink print on their finger that they had just voted, and they were so proud of that. That was a monumental thing for them to see such jubilation and glee in the fact that they put their, their fingerprint on the ballot and that they were able to vote in a democratic way. That was, one of the, that was one of the most defining moments of the reason why I was there. I got the call to help with COVID in my local community with the testing, and I got to, to have a big impact. We think in the military that the front lines is usually overseas, so it was different being able, being able to serve in your own community, have an impact here where the threat was in your own backyard. Uh, I think it will always be transitioning to civilian life. 
Um, I think I'm comfortable with it, but I find over the time, having been out since 2007, that it's more of a function of helping civilians understand me as opposed to me adjusting to civilian life. I don't know that I'll ever accomplish that. That's kind of a hard one. Uh, I've been, I was on shore duty for the last three years. I did, besides work, it was there's not a lot of connection to the Navy outside of that up here. Uh, I think that has helped me transition to, to civilian life. I don't know if I might always be transitioning. It's a, it's a weird thing to step out of. Um, I mean, the, the camaraderie of being underway and The advice I would give myself is go in as an officer and really get all you can get from the from the service. Enjoy the time, enjoy the camaraderie that you will have with your colleagues or your fellow soldiers. Become the person that you want to be. Look forward to the future. There's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. Again, they are people who uh, have fought uh, to preserve the values of this country. And again, and some have made great, great sacrifices, and some have made the ultimate sacrifice. So and I think that's worthwhile noting and uh, recognizing the contribution they have made to this country. There's a huge spectrum of uh, walks of life where people come from that decide to serve uh, and then who are veterans. Um, I don't think there's one mold that, that, that people fit into. Yeah, you know, we're just people. We're, we're passionate about the things that we care about. Um, we all had different experiences, but we all had kind of a similar experience, too. Um, and, you know, we're out there and we'll make, we'll make good employees for you. Each veteran had their own role, and you'll, you don't know what that role possibly could be. Um, point in case, my father, who was a World War II veteran, um, he did three landings in the Pacific, and I had no idea that he did that, um, let alone what other veterans might have done, um, because some things are held close and some things are not. And it's so important to always remember that some veterans have seen things that nobody else will ever have to experience. And with that, they carry a lot of burden. I do miss my time in service. There are certain uh, moments, um, like I said, that, uh, you know, really, really good times. I miss the people I served with. I do miss being a Marine a lot. I mean, once a Marine, always a Marine, but um, I don't think I'll ever not miss being a Marine. I don't really miss my time in service. Uh, I think it was an enjoyable time in my life. I will look fondly back upon it, but I'm ready to move on and ready to, to continue with where I'm going. Every day with rose-colored glasses. Um, you know, there, there's certainly a lot of things I wouldn't like to do again, but, you know, by the same token, there, there are a lot of things that I may never get to do again. That Certain aspects of it, yes, I definitely do. Um, it would be nice if I could just, uh, you know, hop on board a submarine and go out for a couple months and then come back and be good for a year. Uh, but <laughs> I know that's not going to happen. My fondest memory of the time in service was uh, when I was an instructor at the Naval Academy. I spent three years there. I was uh, executive assistant to the engineering department head, electrical engineering department head. We were underwater for a very long time doing things that we never did in places that we never were. Um, and one of the things I had to do when the ship was surfaced was um, go topside and make sure there's no radioactive contamination. And so I was like the first person that got to go off the boat in the middle of Bermuda and it was sunrise and it was the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen um, as far as being in the middle of the ocean, no land anywhere. Um, so for that moment, it was very good. Stupid conversations, you know, late at night with, with your friends, your buddies, while you're standing watch. Uh, we had a port call in Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, and everybody kind of just went out to the bars. Uh, a few friends and I talked to the husbanding agent that the, uh, the embassy sends to tell us where it's safe to go, and we said, get, 
give us a tour. Give us, give us like a tour tour. Let's see some stuff. And uh, she, she did it. And a couple guys showed up with a flatbed truck and a bottle of rum and we gave them 20 bucks each. And they took us out to see all the sites. Uh, we got to hand roll some cigars. We got to grind some coffee. And then we ended the day climbing a uh, cascade of 27 waterfalls and they, they barbecued for us. It was pretty awesome. Uh, my favorite time of my life. The, the couple of months before I started training in Saratoga Springs, those were some of the best friends I ever made. And we just kind of, we just kind of did junior enlisted shenanigans. There was this notion that if you uh, go to a combat zone, something is wrong with you when you come back. There were a lot of movies based on that theme. But many people, most people go and they come back and they transition into society. And most people are surprised to find that I was actually a Vietnam veteran. And you're a regular guy, almost. <laughs> so. uh, not all veterans saw combat. Not all veterans were in combat roles or even were in training for combat roles. There's so many logistical items that go along with being a veteran in our armed services. We're special in our own way. We, we bring something unique wherever we go because of our experiences. We don't all have tattoos. That's probably the biggest one I would think. There are a lot of female veterans that people do not even think of them as even the possibility of being a veteran that they generally don't get recognized and my daughter included she's a veteran navy veteran now third generation in my family you know when she parks in the parking spot that says veterans only and some <laughs> old guys give her the dirty stink eye you know when she gets out of the car they just don't understand that she's a veteran i would like civilians to understand that veterans are people too and sometimes the uh, the mental wounds that they experience in war need time to heal and they don't always heal fully. So please be patient with veterans and understand that they're they're trying their best and sometimes they just need a little help. That's one of the biggest stigmas is is mental health, but to be able to just speak to someone, to say, hey, if you're good, that's good, I'm just checking in. Um, to understand that other people are out there to help you, to support you, um, and they need the same thing too. Someone could be great on the outside, they could show off everything positive, but deep down they could be fighting uh, you know, an inner battle right there. So I think that's one of the stigmas and that's something I, I try my best to you know, put forward and, and just uh, you know, pay, it, pay it forward. My name is Morris Washington. I served in the United States Army, 1969, 1970. I spent a year stateside and then I went to Vietnam. I served as light weapons infantry in Vietnam, operating out of the Central Highlands in Pleiku and An Khe. When I came back to this country, the United States, I completed my degree. I came to RPI by 2000. Here I am a member of the physics department associate director of the Center for Materials, Devices, and Integrated Systems, and a advisor to the Student Veteran Association. Hello, my name is Kent Way. I was in the United States Air Force from September 17, 1980 to September 17, 1984. Um, thank you veterans for serving your country. Um, and it's been an honor. My name is Howard Olhouse. I was in the United States Army from 1982 to 1985. 
as a combat telecommunications center operator uh, with the rank of specialist fourth class. Now I work at RPI, the Lighting Research Center Research Technician. I'm Mark Maialero, served in the United States Navy, uh, sonar technician second class petty officer from 1985 to 1993. I'm currently serving in .CIO in the School of Engineering as System Administrator too. James Olson, nuclear machinist mate, U.S. Navy, 1995-2006. My name is Benjamin Young. I served in the military for eight years in the United States Army Reserves from 1999 to 2007. I was a 92-alpha supply specialist in support during one tour overseas in Operation Iraqi Freedom II. My name is Michael Juno. I served as a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps as a combat cameraman from June 2006 to November 2014, and I deployed in support of Iraqi Freedom. My name is Andrew Oliver. I'm a prior service army specialist in the United States Army. I served from 2007 to 2017 in the 206 Military Police Company. I deployed to Iraq 2009 to 2010 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, my name is David Schultz. I was a first class petty officer in the United States Navy from December 2010 till July 2020. I am seeking a bachelor's in science in electrical engineering. My name is Aaron Pape. I served in the Coast Guard from 2010 to 2013. I got out as a boatswain's mate third class and now I'm here at RPI going for a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. My name is Thomas McCarthy. I was in the Navy from 2013 to 2017. I was a nuclear machinist mate third class and now I'm, an, and now I'm at RPI studying physics. My name is James Russell. I am a specialist in the New York Army National Guard. I am so still serving, I've been serving since 2016, and I'm a public safety officer here at the Institute. Hi, my name is Ernie Katzwinkle. I served in the Navy as a Civil Engineer Corps officer from 1975 to 2003, and uh, transitioned, as they say, into civilian life as a captain. And most of the time I was, uh, the duties I performed was Combat engineering uh, through facilities management. I uh, was an instructor at the Naval Academy for a few years, and then I spent some time doing logistics support for a major fleet staff in support of the Gulf War. So I hope uh, everybody has a great Veterans Day and uh, be kind to a veteran. Thank you.